you have probably seen widget lifecycle methods before. It could be things like init state and dispose. They are a great tool, but also has some drawbacks. A fundamental problem with widget lifecycle methods is that they bind the implementation to the specific widgets. A example could be a normal animation controller, where you first set it up in init state and then dispose it in the dispose method. And depending on how it's implemented, you may also have to add a did update widget. Now, this is not a problem in itself. The problem occurs when we want to do the same in another widget. And this is where hooks come into place. In this case, Flutter hooks already have a implementation for animation controller, which you can simply use by calling use animation controller. But now what happened to all of that logic? Well, it actually moved into the method of use animation controller. And the thing we are going to implement is a very simple timer. So when this timer is created, we're going to tick every second and display that second in the widget. First, we're going to start with the normal implementation of widgets life cycles. Then getting your hands dirty with things like hook widget, use effect and use state. And then to finish it off, we're going to create our own custom hook. If you like these videos, make sure to check out the website, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do is head to the pubspec yaml file. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the comments here so it's easier to read. Now we're going to add a new dependency, and a dependency is going to be flutter hooks. After we have gotten the dependency, we're going to move over to the main.dart file. I'm going to write the majority of the code in here so it's easier to follow. We start off by removing all of the comments and changing our home page so the only thing it actually returns is the app bar and a center widget with a text. So now we have a super simple stateful widget which just have a variable for the number that we display in the center. Now if you want to implement a timer normally, you would first have to create a variable for the timer. After that is complete, you override the init state method. Now the reason for this is because we initialize the timer in the init state. So we're going to set the timer as a new timer, but before that we're just going to set all of the variables to private variables instead. Now the timer class actually has a constructor for periodic, which will give us a callback every time the duration has passed. In our case, we are giving the duration of seconds 1, which means that we'll get a callback every second. Now inside this callback, we can simply do a set state, where we set the number, which is now equals to 0, but we set it equals to the timer tick value. Now one thing you always have to remember when working with a timer in this case, is that on dispose of this widget, you have to cancel the actual timer. So by overriding dispose, we can reference our timer and call the cancel method. And this is one way you can implement a timer that would tick every second in the widget of a text. The problem with this approach now is that if you want to create another widget with this usage, you would have to override the init state and dispose and do all of the implementations again. Now we're going to take a look on how we can do the same thing, but instead using a hook widget. So we're going to use the normal snippet for a stateless widget because that's easier. And then instead of extending the stateless widget, we extend the hook widget coming from the library. Now, as the UI is going to be the same in all of these three, I'm just going to copy the UI and return that in the bottom of the build function. Now hook widget doesn't have init state and dispose. They actually use hooks instead. So we will not be able to use, for example, set state here either. So the way you work with these things, in this case, we're going to use a use state hook. And when this variable changes, it will actually call the build method and rebuild the widget, meaning that the state will update. Now, one thing you have to be aware of is that this is a value notifier. So you would have to call value on it. Now for the init state and dispose, we're going to use the use effect hook. This actually has multiple functions. So first off, if we want it to only happen once, we define a empty list of keys. If we would pass anything to this list and that would change, then the callback of use effect would be called once again. But as we only want it to happen once, we will not pass anything. Now inside here, you can work as you're using a init state. So in this case, we're going to initialize a timer and this will be just as before. We're going to use timer.periodic, have a duration of one second for each tick and then create the callback for whenever that tick happens. Now, if you remember, we do not actually use set state anymore. 
can just use this value notifier and set a value to the time.tick. Now to dispose of this, you actually just return the timer cancel method. And here you have a lot of functionality just in one single hook. There is also great documentation, so you can also read up on that if you want to. Now for actually creating our custom hook, we're going to first off, of course, create a new hook widget. This is going to be very similar to the other ones. Just make sure that you extend the hook widget. For the return statement, we just, of course, copy the last one that we used and just paste it into the new one. Now, the way we actually go about creating a custom hook is actually very simple. Now for the logic of this hook, we're going to create a new file. The hook will be responsible for initializing the timer, disposing it, and then of course returning that number value. Now a easy way to create a hook is to start off by creating a stateful widget. We're going to make it private because we don't actually want to use the actual class. We give it the name infinite timer. And then of course, instead of extending the stateful widget, we're just going to extend hook. Now it gives us some errors because we have to define some more things. The hook type is going to be a integer. Now the reason for create state is red is because we extend state instead of hook state. And that actually also requires integer and then of course the infinite timer type. Now the build method doesn't actually return a widget anymore. We have specifically told it that we want it to return a integer. And this of course is going to be the number that is going to be incremented every second. For the time being we're just going to have an empty return. Now what we're going to start off with is defining our timer variable and the integer number that we're going to have. The implementation of this is very similar to the stateful widget and you will soon see how. So we start off by overriding init hook, which is pretty much the same as init state, but for this hook instead. Here we can have the same logic as before. So we initialize the timer variable by setting it to timer.periodic, setting the duration to one second again, and then defining our callback. Now every time this callback happens, we call set state. And here, of course, we set the number to the actual timer tick again. Now, of course, also remember that the timer has to be disposed of. So we override the dispose method and then calling cancel on that timer. Now, two more things we have to do. The first one being in the return statement, we actually have to return that number variable. And the other thing is actually defining our use timer method. So we're going to go to the top of the file and define a new method. The return time is going to be the number, so integer. And we prefix all our hooks with use. So in this case, it's going to be called use infinite timer. And we're going to pass the context to this. Here we can start by returning a use method which is responsible for registering a hook. Now inside this use method, we actually just define our infinite timer. We'll make it constant, so define constant, then underscore infinite timer, because we made it private. And now of course, just create the constant constructor for the infinite timer hook. Now what we actually have done now is extracting all of the logic that we have for our timer into our custom hook. Now if we move over to our main.dart file, head to our latest hook widget, we can define a variable inside the build method the same way we use other hooks. Now we actually have access to our use infinite timer, which gives us this number variable. Now this is the actual end result for that widget. You can see that it is a lot easier to read now the real value comes when we actually reuse the hooks. So in normal use cases that you want to have the same functionality in another widget. So just to show that we're just going to create another widget called homepage custom hook 2, which is going to be a hook widget. And if we want this widget to also use a timer, we just have to define that use infinite timer. And we don't have to care about initializing the timer, disposing the timer and so on. 
Now when you have knowledge of this, you know all of the fundamentals for using hooks in your app. If you like these videos, make sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, sign up on the newsletter on the site for more future content, and of course if you would like to support me, on Patreon I have a bunch of different perks, so a special thanks for everyone that's supporting me there. Other than that, I will see you in the next one.